So, peeps, another day, and another cheeky little component video for you beautiful people out there. What we got here, we've got the thermo couple. Now, why would we use a thermo couple over a, something like a P2100? Well, if it withstands a lot higher temperatures, they're a lot more cost effective, and they're a more durable and can be a bit more hardy than anything like that. And as by this table, we can see the thermo couples come in different types with their corresponding dis similar metals and their temperature ranges that they range at. Now testing it, we're going to part a multimeter around to millivolts because this is how the magic works. And then I'm going to put my crocodile leads on your positive and your negative. And then I'll come round to how it works and how we test it. Now, oh, look at them going on. Now I know some of you are thinking, I could use some of them crocodile clips at home. And I know what you're thinking. And I'll do the same, but that's when my stage name is Margaret on the weekends. So let's get down to the business end, the testing and how they work. So in the tip here, this is the hot junction with the two dissimilar metals, and this is going to be in our measured end. And then with the cold junction being and then a plug, and that giving us our potential difference, and we can work the millivolts out. So as we've got our multimeter set to millivolts, I'm going to put this... So putting this probe over the heat gun now, this is going to happen due to as the heart junction in the probe end heating up, there will be a potential difference. So the temperature is different between the hot and the cold junctions, with the cold junction being the plug, allowing the negative electrons to move to the colder end, leaving the hotter end more positively charged. And with this potential difference, the mobile meter will then work out through work out the millivolts from the two dissimilar metals because if you had two similar metals or the same metals the, the potential difference is going to be the same so you're going to have zero volts and the way to work out the leads is the dissimilar metal that is uh, the electrons are moving more freely and the negative charge is more at the cold end that is going to be your negative So when it comes to testing, I'd always take the probe out, put it in a known good temperature source and then work out what the millivolts should be using this table and then you'll see if the probe is reading right. So as you can see, using this table and the heat gun being about 9.1 millivolts to 9.7, it should be around the 220 Celsius mark. And always remembering to ensure that you're using the right table for the type of thermocouple you're using. And as you can see here, I always bang on about flute and my trusty flute meter. But we do have actually a thermocouple that is an attachment to the multimeter. And this gives a good readout when you're doing breakdowns. And it's a Type K, which is the most common that you'd actually see in any kind of workplace. And as you can see, it's set to millivolts, but then I press the function button. And it's actually doing all of the calculations for me. And as always, beautiful people, if you made it this far, you're legend approved.